Hello, 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 it's Anesta27 coming to you guys with week number three of the NU Age League Battling. Wow, I cannot remember. I refuse to ever say that name correctly. I don't know why, but we are in week three. This week, the Detroit Copa Lions will be taking on the Collingwood Magmore. Magmore! Or whatever the hell you say it like. This is going to be Hollow Gengar's team. And if you guys know anything about us, we we love each other so this battle was literally the most important battle of the entire season because i only go against him once and i had to make sure that it counted even though i'm 0-2 and, and he's 2-0 and oh, i don't really care i'm bringing in full power i'm bringing in the strongest mons i don't care so we're gonna hop right into this battle all right so hollow will be issuing us a challenge i decided to lead off with my primate mostly because i wanted to get u-turn switch priority as he decides to lead off with his hairy mama a very original name mr hollow gengar but i'm going to go for the u-turn obviously and i'm what i was almost 100 percent sure he was going to go for a knockoff this first turn because that tends to be a thing for first turn users so i decided to switch into my granbull because i was i sort of wanted to keep my walls with their leftovers and black sludge so i was like okay this this granbull without the av isn't gonna be the worst thing mostly because it won't be taking there weren't that many phys special attackers on his team as far as i remember so i was like you know what uh intimidate plus resisted would probably make this a very good move for my part so I decided to switch in the Gramble as he decides to switch out his Harry Mama into Karthus. I really don't understand this nickname right now as I go for the play rough. Thankfully the play rough is going to do about 40-ish percent, but after leftovers there's probably no way we're going to be able to kill this Dusk Noir at all. So uh, right now I, it's very obvious that he's probably going to go for a Will-O-Wisp. So I decided to send in the Becca to take the Flash Fire and that will be very good because Flash fire on a nine tails is actually really good. I am constantly in debate to keep fire blast versus uh, flamethrower because, as you guys know, I do miss a lot of a lot of moves with base 90 accuracy, and to make it base like 70 or whatever the hell it is on for fire blast, it would make me so sad. But I decided to test out how much a flamethrower would do against a dust noir. It does like nothing as he decides to go for the pain split, which really baffles me because I really don't see pain split with the combination of leftovers. It's really redundant if you ask me, but whatever, it's his Pokemon. I go for dark pulses as he goes for an earthquake. I didn't know that dust noirs carry earthquake. And I was very surprised that Becca was able to live that at all because I have no HP investment, no defense investment. It was all, it was all because this Dust Noir probably doesn't have any attack investment. So lucky for us, we were able to live a little bit, and I decided to save Becca for a little bit because we do probably need her for the uh, Lilligant that he has. So I'm going to switch into Spoil to take the incoming Earthquake, the probable mm, Earthquake, as he goes for it very, very predictably. It's going to go, wow, how many times did I just say predictable? But it's not going to do that much because the Intimidate does, uh, does nullify a good portion of it as I go for the Crunch this turn. And here I thought that Crunch with Max, Max Attack Adamant would kill the Karthus, but he lives with like 1 HP. I don't know how in God's green earth he was able to live that because that's essentially half my HP. I pretty much lost exactly half of my HP. So that pretty much puts me in the terrible position. So here I thought he'd want to save his Karthus uh, and switch out. So I went for the play rough uh, trying to be safe, but he decides to stay in which really surprised me as I unsurprisingly miss a play up and I go for a crunch the next turn and as you guys saw last time crunch is not gonna be able to kill off a Karthus from probably more than 30 per more than 50 percent as he goes for the will-o-wisp uh not sure as to why he didn't try to kill me right now but I'm not complaining because my vile plume has aromatherapy and I could maybe use this spoiled for later and I 100% knew that dust noir was gonna switch out because I do outspeed and at this range he was going to die even if I were burnt so I decided decide to switch out into that, that vile plume as he decides to switch out into his hairy mama, I believe. Yes, it is true. He brings in the hairy mama and this turn, it's a blessing in, in disguise right here as I decided to go for a sleep powder because I knew that this hairy mama would be a problem, but I missed, but it, it won't matter. And it's actually better that we missed that 
and you guys will see in a little bit as he got, decides to go for a knockoff. And here I knew that he'd probably want to save his hairy mama to uh, to prevent the sleep. So I decided to go for a sludge bomb and he pretty much, <laughs> he sent in the best mom to take it for me. And that Lilligant, that setup monster in this league is now gone. So I'm able to go very, very nicely as he decides to switch in his Patriot. Here... I uh, I was sort of banking that he hadn't moved, changed his move set at all from previous games. That he for some reason keeps pluck over Brave Bird, and after asking him, I he said that he didn't want to lose any HP, which is very odd because I, personally I go power over um, power over uh, HP over trying to save some HP. So uh, thankfully I do hit the the um, the sleep powder on the what's it called the. The swallow, so the guts isn't activated, and it, as he switches out, very obviously, I decide to go for aromatherapy. And at this part, he has a mill tank, and I have my sand slash. And right now, this is going to be a very, 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 very sped up battle because all I wanted to do was get my rocks up, so the dust noir could not switch in at all. And I just wanted this mill tank to lose its item, so I have knockoff for it as he's uh. Very oddly, have going for knockoff, trying to get a paralysis on me. I am very, very. Uh, I really didn't care if he paralyzed me because all I wanted was a sand slash to die. And in, in retrospect, I probably should have uh, switched out into another mod to take to die to this nipples. But uh, I guess I thought that sand slash has essentially used up his use as he goes for milk drinks. And I really hated Hollow for having milk drink, which. I don't know why he has milk drink. It just really annoys me. And yes, thank you, Pipe, for actually doing this right now. This is the worst time right now. All right. So he is, I think this is about the time where he decides to finish me off with a body slam. Finally, after like, I think this was like eight turns or something. I'm very sorry if you guys hear the water pipes. I'm very sorry. But I decided to switch in, but to, into my Prime Ape to take this milk tank on. I knew that this uh, Dust Noir could not live any kind of rocks, so going for close combat was my best move as he, as he decides to switch in the Dust Noir to die to Stealth Rocks. He doesn't have any Stealth Rock or uh, Rapid rapid Spinners or Defoggers, so I was safe unless that Swallow had Defog. That was his only chance, but that thing doesn't look like it will be staying alive will be waking up anytime soon since it hasn't even gone through one turn. So he sends in the Harry Mama and I'm just like, yo, I just want Intimidate and possibly a turn to live. And how long are these pipes going to keep going? Like, Jesus, I'm really sorry, guys. Like, I don't know why. Okay, Force Palm me. It's going to kill me, obviously. I think he was trying to... It's very odd how he has Force Palm over Body Slant or versus close combat so here I sort of realized that he's trying to go with a little bit of a hexish kind of team versus what is actually supposed to be used so I'm gonna sw switch into my org my org my uh, for alligator to go for some waterfalls here I thought that um, that the waterfalls will be doing about 50% because I am life orb max attack but uh, the hairy mama is very very bulky as he decides to go for a bulk up and right now i'm just like yo i'm probably gonna have to swords dance i have swords dance over dragon dance with this set which is uh which ended up working out this time around so i'm going to go for a swords dance this turn because i knew that i could live at least one knockoff based on how much this hariyama is doing against my other mons so i was able to live that relatively nicely and it was very nice that he went for a knockoff because now I don't have to worry, worry about recoil damage with the life orb. Even though I'm going to have less powerful moves, it's going to work out in the long run as you guys are going to see. I'm going to go for a waterfall. This thing is going to uh, get very, very close to dying, but he's going to go for a bulk up once again. This bulk up is going to matter so much right now. I'm going to go for another waterfall as he gets a little bit of leftovers recovery right now. Um, the waterfall is not going to be enough to take out the hairy mama, but I was praying that I was able to, I would be able to get a flinch, but I unfortunately don't get it, and I was praying right now, please don't get the paralysis. Thankfully, he doesn't, and from this this point on, I knew that Orc could sweep the t sweep his uh, team because one, he has an Excel Gore, so the possibility of it having a sash is broken with rocks. And then the Swallow hadn't had a single turn of sleeping, so I knew it was over from there. So he's going to switch in the nipples. The nipples wasn't was in no way going to live a plus two waterfall from this for alligator. So this is where the the fact that I lost my life orb comes in handy because now I'll be able to live uh, all for the rest of the game. Essentially, I'm able to get this uh, nice sweep out of for org right now because 
this is this Excelgar is not going to be able to have Focus Sash. I'm able to go for an Aqua Jet, and since Excelgar probably has one of the worst defenses in all of the metagame, I'm able to finish it off, and all he has left is a Swallow, and since I carry Ice Punch, Atria hadn't been asleep for one turn, so I'll be able to take this thing out with a single Ice Punch, and that, my friends, will be the first victory for the Detroit Cobra Lions. It was, it's a long time coming, guys. We have, we have made it into the winners. <laughs> We've got the first one, guys. But, uh, it was a very good game, Hollow. This was a, not the easiest 4-0. It was barely a 4-0, actually. I technically, if I really wanted to, uh, Ninetales was dead, essentially. Uh, Vileplume was dead, essentially. But, essentially, it would have been a 2-0 if I really wanted to be technical. I find, even though it's technically a 4-0, I, in my eyes, it's pretty much a 2-0 because, uh, Bioplume couldn't do anything, and Ninetales probably couldn't outspeed anything from that range. But uh, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to hit that like button. It really does mean a lot. Make sure to check out Hollow in the description below. He's a very good friend, uh, and he did give out a really good battle. It was a very unfortunate battle because he decided to message me afterwards saying that he was try he was very <laughs> I was playing very weird, and I made him nervous for some odd reason. But anyways, uh, if you guys uh, aren't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to check out everyone else in the NUH League Battle. NUH, N -A -N -U -H Battling League, I think that's what it's called. I will never be able to say this correctly, believe it or not. But uh, this has been Anester, and I'll see you guys next week.